welcome to a special edition on the feast of the baptism of the lord the baptism of the lord marks the end of the christmas season and the beginning of the ordinary time now, following the epiphany or the manifestation of jesus as the king by the magi this sunday we are introduced to the second epiphany where jesus is revealed or manifested as god's beloved son looking at the liturgy of the feast day the first reading taken from isaiah chapter 42 which is the first of the four servant songs found in isaiah speak of the servant in the singular as a messiah sent by god to bring healing and justice to the people today's passage presents god's servant as a prophet with a mission and a divine destiny who is anointed by god's holy spirit to teach the world he is to teach gently but firmly without crushing the fragile spirit of those who are weak he is to teach despite opposition to his mission and he will transcend the mission of other prophets as god's supreme prophet since he himself is both the light and the bearer of a divine covenant that will bring healing liberation and salvation to the people and we know that this prophecy is fulfilled in jesus who is god's servant in today's response you are some taken from psalm 29 the response is the lord will bless his people with peace God's divine covenant name Yahweh is repeated 18 times in this psalm with a capital L Lord. This hymn of praise invites the members of the heavenly assembly namely the angels who are collectively called as sons of God in this passage to acknowledge God's supreme sovereignty over the heavens and the earth. The psalmist urges them to declare God's supremacy by crying out glory in the heavenly temple to Yahweh the eternal king. The second reading taken from Acts chapter 10 in this passage Saint Peter addresses the assembly of the God-fearing Gentiles in the home of the Roman centurion Cornelius. The gift of salvation is finally extended to the Gentiles and the Gentile Christians also enjoy equal privileges as the Jewish Christians by virtue of their baptism in the kingdom of God. So the gift of salvation is not just for Christians but for everyone in this world. A gospel reading taken from Matthew chapter 3 which is the baptism of Jesus by Saint John the Baptist this happens to be the first luminous mystery of the holy rosary and therefore let us see the fruits that can be derived by meditating on this mystery of light the church from the early years has always understood the new testament in light of the old testament and similarly the old testament ought to be read in light of Christ crucified As scripture records Jesus baptism takes place on the east bank of the Jordan River where the children of Israel camped before Joshua led them across the river into the promised land. Now Matthew a Jew writing to his Jewish audience is hinting back to the events of the Old Testament that took place at the River Jordan. The exodus of the Israelites in the Old Testament which began from Egypt through the parting of the Red Sea finally culminates in God's people passing through the River Jordan. into the promised land as Joshua parts the Jordan river in today's gospel as Jesus is baptized in the river Jordan scriptures record that the waters don't part however the heavens part or open now what does this signify Jesus is a type of Joshua who will bring about a new exodus however it will not be from an earthly land to another earthly land as it was in the old testament but it will be from an earthly land to heaven our promised land therefore the heavens part by virtue of our baptism we enter the kingdom of god by adam's sin at the beginning of creation the heavens were closed until jesus the new adam enters the scene and we have the heavens opening up signifying jesus bringing about a new creation another thing to note is that it is here at the river jordan elijah was taken into heaven and his successor elisha would receive a double portion of his anointing to continue his ministry and consequently elisha would do miracles like turning a bad water into clean water making a widow's oil to fill many jars and even raising a boy from the dead john the baptist and jesus are like types of elijah and elisha respectively where john's ministry would cease and jesus will be anointed by the spirit to begin his ministry and jesus would do similar miracles as elisha did Although Jesus had no sin and John tried to prevent him saying that he needed to be baptized by him Jesus allows it because he says it is fitting for 
us to fulfill all righteousness. Now, what does this statement mean? The words fulfill or fulfilled is found 18 times in St. Matthew's Gospel, which refers to the fulfillment of scripture and God's divine plan. In Bible, righteousness is defined as obedience to God. Jesus' baptism by John is fitting and righteous because John and Jesus are submitting themselves to the Father's will in fulfilling this aspect of God's plan for humanity's salvation. Jesus' baptism by John is part of his acceptance of his mission and his inaugural anointing as God's servant son who has come to heal and bring justice to the people as we saw in the first reading. He has come among sinners, prostitutes, thieves, tax collectors, etc. to allow himself to be numbered among them and is already anticipating his bloody baptism through which they can receive forgiveness for their sins. Moreover, the Catechism of the Catholic Church says, our Lord voluntarily submitted himself to the baptism of St. John intended for sinners in order to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus' gesture is a manifestation of his self-emptying. The spirit who had hovered over the waters of the first creation descended then on the Christ as a prelude of the new creation and the father revealed Jesus as his beloved son. Now this is the allegorical sense. What is the moral sense? How does this scripture or this passage of today's gospel relate to us? By the waters of our baptism, heavens opened for us and we became part of God's family and we are beloved sons and daughters of our heavenly father and we have been anointed by the Holy Spirit with a mission. Now when we think of mission, we think of preaching to people of large gatherings. We need not go that far. We have enough at hand. Who said loving your spouse unconditionally was going to be easy? Who said bringing up children in the discipline of the faith in this immoral world was ever going to be easy? Who said being a parent is easy? Being a Christian witness within your household is challenging. Being a witness in your workplace and in your parish is tough. Who said being a Christian itself is easy? Who said bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit and fighting against the temptations of the flesh as listed in in Galatians chapter 5 was going to be a walk in the park. Difficult but not impossible because we have the anointing by the oil of chrism, the same anointing of Christ to fulfill these daunting tasks. So every time we come from mass, we are reminded of this mission. At the end of the liturgy, the priest dismisses us with the words, the mass is ended, go and serve the Lord. The word mass comes from the Latin word misa, from where we also get the English word mission. We renew our baptismal grace every time we come for mass and we are nourished with bread or manna from heaven to fulfill this missionary calling. And what is the anagogical sense? That is, how is this scripture related to our true homeland, which is heaven? We are called to live our baptismal promises daily, grow in holiness and do the works of love. Our faith and works will eventually save us. You see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so faith apart from the works is dead. The church has always interpreted scriptures by using these various senses which I have been speaking about, which is also listed in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 115 to paragraph 118. You may want to read more about it. So on this feast day, let us remind ourselves of our baptismal promises and let us endeavor to fulfill them. I wish you all a blessed feast day.